Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are going to make a very nice, simple, very easy app in less than 20 minutes. So this is not just a Twitter account, but also it analyzes the emotions. You can copy text even, you can create this button and you can post on Twitter. Awesome. So we are going to use three libraries. I'm going to show you first how this app works. Very simple. So if I just paste in something here, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. You see the number of characters, 41 out of 280 that Twitter allows. And if I press control enter, you can see the emotion minus one. So it's the most negative. So emotion is between minus one and plus one. And subjectivity is from zero to one. The zero is factual or objective based on facts and uh, this is subjective. So I can copy this if I uh, add something to it. Yeah, for example, if I copy text, if I here press control V, you see, all this has been pasted. If I, I can also use this here, you see, so you can copy this text using this button. Awesome. And you can also post on Twitter. If I click on this, you see this opens up and I can post something there. So now I'm going to use, uh, first of all, a streamlet for, uh, for, um, as a platform where we can have that user interface, that's web app, awesome. And then we are going to use Pipe, Piper Clip, which was developed by one and only Al Swigard, who wrote uh, Automate Boring Stuff with Python, and also Text Blob for a sentiment analysis. You can see how to download them all. So for Piperclip, you just need to pip install Piperclip. Streamlit again, pip install Streamlit. And for text blob, you can see here, pip install text blob. Also, you need to download the Corpora. So Python text blob download underscore Corpora. Once you have installed these, onto your terminal. Once you have done this in your terminal, like pip install a streamlet, pip install a text blah, pip install a Piperclip, and the download the corpora, then you need to import them up there, like import the streamlet as ST. This is like a nickname or an alias. From text blob, import text blob, uppercase T and B, and import Piperclip. Now, in order to start our streamlit app, you just need this command, streamlit run main.py, and main refers to the name of the file here. If I press enter, it will start a server, local server. And you can see local URL, network URL, local host here, and this is what happens. And for me, uh, for me, this has been there because I just uh, wrote something there. For you, it would be empty. On the right, you can see this menu here. You can go to setting. You can change the theme to light if you want to. I prefer dark. And click on run and save. So whenever you um, change the source code and save that source code, the changes will be reflected here on your web page. Okay, now back to our IDE. I'm using a pie chart. So once you've down imported these, we can just give our app a name, a title st streamlit. That title is a method, and I can also use like header that would be a bit smaller. And if I save this and go back, you see tweet count. Good. Now what we need, the first thing we need is a uh, text area where people can write in or type in their tweets. So well, let's call it text. And Streamlit gives us st dot text area, so that we have text area. The text area should have a label. Let's call it enter tweet, and let's save it and go and see what we have here. You see, this is what you get. Awesome. But you see, there is no character count, no limit, nothing. So we can set that maximum characters here by giving it another argument max. And you see these options I have here, max chars means max characters. And since Twitter allows only 280 characters, let's set it to that. If I save and go back, you see now we have it. 
So when I start typing in, you see this increases seven characters here. Okay, now that we have this, I want to have two buttons here next to it. That is, I want two columns, one column for this text area, one column for two buttons, post on Twitter and copy. So let's create two columns. How do you do that in Streamlit? You just define them, call one, you can call it whatever you want, call two, because we need two columns, and a Streamlit gives us this, st.columns. If I press, for example, two, it means I want the screen to be divided in two parts. One part would be call one, one part would be call two. Now, how do I put stuff under these columns? So I would say with call one, so with a with statement, I'm opening up call column one to the text and I have to indent it. So everything that I indented here would be under column one. Now, what about column two? With call two, we need, oh, here I made a mistake, call two. So with call two, I need a button which is copy, right? So let's just give it a name, copy equals st dot button, it gives us a button, and let's say copy text. This is the text which will be on the button. If I save it and go back, you see, I have two parts. Half the page is for this one, half for this one, but this is unfair, this is longer. So maybe I want three parts to be the uh, text area and one part to be the this button. So for that kind of proportions here, instead of two, we use a list because we now we have two uh, values. Let's say three to one. That is divided into four parts, give three parts to the first column and one part to the other. Now you see, now since it's a bit high there, aligned with this, maybe I can add some dummy text up uh, to push this down a bit. So I would just use st.write method, which just write something there but I don't want to write anything. And let's copy this again and push it down a bit. Let's see, you see now it works better. But this copy text doesn't work just by itself, just because we named it copy doesn't work. So we should say here, if copy, that is if someone clicks on that button, that is the button turns true. If someone clicks on the button, something should happen. What should happen? This Piper clip that we imported has a method called copy, so obvious, and it copies what the text that the user enters in, into the text area, into our clipboard. So once someone clips on copy, this Piper clip copies the text inside the text area onto our clipboard so it will be available. We can use control V for example on a Windows or right click and paste it. Okay, let's try this. Let's save this control S and go back. Now if I say this is it, if I copy text, now let's just control V, you see it works. Paste works. Awesome. So copy works. Now Twitter how do I create a hyperlink that you can click on and it takes you to a page where you can write your tweet? So let's see, let's get out of this if, but still under the same column. We can create a link. Um, for example, the link that we are going to create is going to be a combination of uh, parentheses and brackets. What do they represent? A parenthesis, well, a set of parentheses or round brackets would be the the label, for example, post on Twitter. And then the list that represent the link, the hyperlink, where it should go. But where should it go? Well, so here, twitter.com intent tweet uh, question mark text equals ampersand submit equals post plus on plus Twitter. So this, if you go to this uh, URL, it will pop up that says what's happening and you will just tweet there, right? And that is what should happen. Now, let's go back and here, I think I just 
mix them up so this one should be actually inside a square brackets and the link should be inside parentheses like this okay let's paste this URL now so now if I save this and go back oh I should uh, put it down there so yeah link now if I go back you see post on Twitter if I click on this you see here we have see what was happening now and I can write in whatever I want but this is a bit uh, not very nice maybe we can style it so to style this because we need to see which element it has so we can right click on it and go to inspect and find the class name that is responsible for styling and this is the class name responsible you see I can know because if I uh, if I go back and if I say st dot markdown you're going to use markdown to style it so as stream it provides that for us and we use style tag which is a CSS tag so if you know HTML and CSS you, you open and close a style tag like so and inside this we need to specify the class name which is responsible for uh, this uh, a tag this link and that is it that is where we found it so we want to change the background color background color of it to I don't know let's say blue for instance and if I save this and go back let's see if it's changed it hasn't oh the reason is because I should allow streamlit to um, to have uh, HTML so I would say HTML here oops not this one this one unsafe allow HTML and this set it to true now if I save this you see this is the background is blue so the background is blue okay now what else do I want I want the color of the text to be white uh, semicolon I want it to have some padding so that there's some space around it let's just say 10 pixel and uh, what else um, yeah let's have this for now and if I save this and go back you see this maybe let's have it some border radius so that the corners are not that sharp and let's get rid of this underscore as well underline so let's go to the next line and here um, border dash radius let's say five pixels so it's not that sharp and also text dash decoration which is responsible for that underline let's set it to none so that there is no uh, underline there now look it's much better now you see much better okay so these two work now let's have two columns here for our emotions so for emotions let's get rid of these two well let's get out of the columns that's out of this indentation here let's create two more columns call one call two equal the same procedure and this time let's give them two equal width so with call one what we want is to get this text that the user inputs here and grab the sentiment of it so for grabbing the sentiment of it let's go up there and let's create an instance of the text blob class so we are remember importing text blob which gives us access to sentiment analysis and what we want to do is to grab that text and turn it into a text blob instance that is what well, then will have access to sentiment and all that so now that our text is called blob so here let's say uh, st dot um, text and blob this that is our text which is in text blob format now and we want the sentiment of it so let's uh, save this and go back and you see the polarity is zero the subjectivity is zero if I say this is terrible terrible control enter 
polarity is minus one, subjectivity is plus one, right? So let's separate these polarity and subjectivity and put them in two nice formats. So let's get familiar with another concept in the streamlet, which is st.metric. And I will show you how it is. So let's call the first instance emotions, emotion. And emotion is going to be blob dot sentiment but dot polarity we want only the polarity to be called sentiment and now let's have another column so with call two the same st dot metric but this time subjectivity and the subjectivity is going to be blob dot sentiment dot subject Activity. Now, let's take a look at how nice this looks with ST metrics. You see, this is how it looks. This is a label minus one, subjectivity plus one. This is so cool. So, but sometimes uh, this is, for example, not nice. If you do that, uh, you see subjectivity. Oh yeah, okay, actually it works. Yeah, so the copy also works, post on Twitter works. You can also see the emotion as well. Less than, well, almost 16 minutes. Yeah, that was it. That was it. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to just hit the like button if you did and share it. Thank you very much for watching. And